Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to our World of Paws podcast. Today we're discussing the legacy of writer and creator Dwayne McDuffie. Yes, we've wanted to do this one for a long time because Dwayne McDuffie was the writer for shows including Ben 10, Teen Titans, Static Shock, and so many more that are still inspiring people of all ages throughout all these years since he's been gone. His legacy continues through his loyal fan base. Yes. And before we start with that, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell if there's a future podcast on the Pond video. Absolutely. And this is perfect for Black History Month. We've been wanting to do this for years. And finally, we sat down and said, let's get this done. Because no one seems to talk about him anymore. It's like he's disappeared. But he hasn't. Because his creations still live on. You can purchase them. You can see them on streaming services. If you don't already own a lot of them like we do. Right. And... For many who grew up watching his programs, they still are fans. And for you know adults who learned of him with the children, you still love him. Yeah. So yeah. just want to make sure that he gets the proper respect this month. That he should be getting every month. Yes, absolutely. And you know, even being in this year. It's strange to see, you know, it's been this long since he's been gone, but all of his works are still remembered. You can still go on YouTube and see videos about his shows or videos about him. You can see Twitter where they're talking about him and his shows, specific episodes that wrote that impacted uh, the viewers. The uh, legacy of it still goes on. It's like, yeah, it's, it's been gone a long time now, but it still feel, it still stays with people. All these years later, it still stays with people. And not because of, oh, they did something funny, but it was like the love of the writing, the stories, the morals, the lessons, the creativity, and all these shows were prevalent. And there's lots of great writers that are still around for anime and some comics. But those things you mentioned are what made him stand out across the board. And he was consistent with that quality. And that's the word when I, I think of when I think of Dwayne McDuffie. Quality, high quality, just superior quality, top tier. In every project he laid his hands on, and on everything he had an investment in or something to do with, it was always top tier. Yes. All the time. Yes, absolutely. And the shows, like I said, I think the biggest shows that really have hit a lot of people all these years we mentioned in the opening Ben 10, Teen Titans, Static Shock, Superman, Superman, and Justice League. Definitely. Definitely. So we're gonna go over a few of them one by one quickly. Ben 10. Nothing was like it when yes. it originally came on. Man of Action, responsible for the animation. Yes. So a great team up, great combination of talent yes. on this project. Yes. And you watched Ben 10, and I didn't get to see it until after it already had um, been out of syndication, yeah. and we watched it on Netflix when they had it for a short time. Yes. And before that, we rented a few from the now defunct Blockbuster, and after I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, no wonder you love this. Mm-hmm. And Nana and I got to enjoy it with you, yes. with your second viewing. Yes. So tell me, since you were an original viewer, what about this show? made you love it so much and I'll tell you why I loved it after discovering it later. Okay. Well, I think one thing is that even if it had three series, the original Ben 10, Alien Force, which you really love, and Ultimate Alien. And Ultimate Alien was his final series. And I think one part is that, as you said, it was nothing like it before Kid can turn into aliens or 10 superheroes, basically. Mm -hmm. Because the original concept was alternate versions of himself and then they changed it to aliens, which was a good move. So, with this, I think it was really sort of like had the essence of Spider-Man in it, where a person got powers and learned how to use them and be responsible. Grandpa Max was kind of like Uncle Ben. And the whole throughout, the whole thing throughout, I guess each show, but I guess for a majority of it would be um, the original series, the OG series, is that, you know, it was the kid's dream come true being a superhero. But it wasn't just, oh, fight the bad guy and win, that's the end. There was a journey throughout it. Ben grew 
the entire summer vacation. He started off one way at the beginning and came out a whole different kid by the end. Yeah, he still was himself, you know, by the end of the series and even to Alien Force, but he had definitely grown a lot. He learned a lot. He learned to appreciate his family, what it means to be a hero, which is something that came up a lot. Is like, why are you doing this? And you see this comment like in MHA, where it's like, well, why do you want to do this? Why do you help you? Why are you a hero? Is it because you want to save people or because you like the attention of being a hero? And that was a question that came up a lot in the show. And it's something some kids didn't think about till then. It was like, yeah. You know they're doing the right thing, but do they really want to do it because they want to help people or do they just want the fame and the saving is the secondary thing? And that was something Ben had to figure out as he was fighting. Yeah, he wanted to save people, but he really loved having attention too. So it was sort of the unraveling his character as it went on. And this is something that McDuffie brought up in every single one of these shows we mentioned. Yeah. That type of, as you said, the moralistic code values and one thing I do love about what you mentioned for Ben 10 was the family element which is another thing that he would bring up whether they were biological family or they became a family like in Teen Titans yeah. and Justice League yeah. and so forth. I love that about Ben 10. The original it was just hilarious the relationship between he and Gwen and as you said loving Grandpa Max having this secret the family didn't know and but these two kids knew his grandkids and they loved him and he loved them on his weirdness and it was just a fun watch. Now, as you said, for me, Alien Force was my favorite out of the three because the feel of it was just different. It was something yeah. to me that was, uh, it was high energy, it was exciting. The stories that he wrote were really different from anything else that was out there during that time. Right. And you could tell when you were watching these episodes Part of himself was being put into each one. Yes. And during that time when he was writing, I mean, let's be honest, he was the only African-American or black comic writer that was well-known yes, and had that much creative input yes. into multiple shows. It just was unheard of right. during that time. Now, you know, he made and paved a way for the ones who are doing it now. Yeah. And they should be thanking him every time they come up with something or bringing him up in conversation or just saying the debt that they owe to him, but they don't. Again, no. they act like he doesn't exist. Yeah. If it weren't for him, a lot of them, whether it's uh, animation or whether it's doing an anime like Cannon Busters or yeah. Yasuke yeah. or whether it's doing comic books, all the different types they have, none of them will be having this opportunity if Dwayne McDuff had opened the doors for them. Right, exactly. And, exactly. And so Ben 10 is a testament to not only his writing skills, but the type of person that he was. Yes. So now let's talk about Teen Titans. Yes. Okay. So apparently this is the one thing I didn't know because I was not on the internet much when that came out was that people were not looking forward to Teen Titans, the original one, because uh, they didn't like those looking kind of cartoony, trying to shove in an anime style to it. And when it came out, so, but once it came out and first season finished airing, it really changed the entire opinion. It changed the scope of Cartoon Network itself and for their programming. And you got something, yeah, it did have an anime esque style to it, and it'd be silly. It would have this really funny, really goofy episode. You had Beast Boy Sidewalk being bros. You had all those elements, and it was fantastic. But this is the version of Teen Titans. When he made this, people really don't want any other version of Teen Titans now other than them. Every version that comes along after them does never sticks. This is the one that we want, even decades later, because one thing that was always pointed on was the writing. There was so much creative writing put into it, and a lot of focus on the Titans themselves as characters and as a team. Like, teamwork was probably the most important part of the show, because Definitely. I noticed Whenever they had an episode where one of them was missing, because usually the formula is that all of them beat up a bad guy together and they win. But whenever one of them was missing, no matter who it was, powers or no powers, they couldn't beat the bad guy. They would they'd keep losing, they would keep being stuck in this sort of loop where they'd be going high and low and being in a tie and they can't beat them. But when that person came back and joined the fight, they immediately won. And they really taught like they were pretty much a family. Because they even had that in the video game when we played that. Yes. And they pretty much taught that they were pretty much 
a family. They were a team and they were a family. It was still pretty much part of the DC universe, but it was without the uh, addition of the Justice League people and their mentors and stuff involved. It was just them being their own team, but they didn't take it light. They were still treated, they were like the original Young Justice. And I like the game, as you're saying, that family element that was here. Except for this family, they all came along individually. And each character had their own problems. Yeah. Um, Robin didn't want to be in Batman's shadow. Cyborg didn't know what to think of himself because he truly was, you know, half man and half machine. Mm -hmm. You had Starfire who had escaped from her planet. Yeah. From, from persecution. Persecution, sorry. You had Raven whose father was a demon. Yeah. And then you had Beast Boy who was this lovable, fun character who didn't seem to be taken seriously. And then he had left another team you didn't find out until later where he wanted to grow and he wasn't being allowed to do that growth. And again, that Dwayne McDuffie style, bringing all these individual characters together with their own problems becoming a family mm -hmm. and together helping each other to overcome those those um i don't want to say yeah those shortcomings they created themselves because how they were seeing the world from their viewpoint of what was happening to each yes. of them individually yes. and as you said then it became this family that stuck together no matter what even when hell was brought to earth yes. by raven's dad and that's another they stuck together yes and that's another thing quickly bring up is that they had some really dark episodes yes i mean dark as they could for tv at the time because now they let anything on tv and netflix and things they can show as much as they want but back then the darkness had a purpose yes and no matter how dark it got they were still a team. They were still a family. They were still together. They still would win the day. But they would really get pretty dark with the character developments and things. Like someone's trying to change them or tell them this is not right for them. And it's them conflicting with that. You even had a whole episode where when one team member was gone and it got to the future, the Titans disbanded. They were no longer friends because each of them were important to each other. It wasn't just you can take one out and stay the same. That all of them were the core parts so i think with that the darkness had a point to it and it still made a really mature storyline and you know people even talk about the truck episode so much even how it dealt with racism and the great message at the end when um revealing it and it still sticks with everybody years later still talk about it online and the show's been gone for 20 years and also with this show and the writing, he allowed every character to have a spotlight more than once within the series. And yeah. there were five seasons? Yes. And every season, someone ended up being the focal point. And their, again, their growth and their story. And it was so wonderfully done. And it wasn't like, oh my gosh, this is just, just stop. This is just irritating. It never was like that. Because no matter how the story progressed, the teamwork, the family unit, the sticking together, the values, the morals, all of that always was maintained in every single solitary episode. Yes, even, even the, the goofy yes. ones. Even the fun yes. goofy ones. <laughs> yes. So again, this is just another element of McDuffie that came yeah. through and everything he wrote. This is Teen Titans forever. They are literally forever the Teen Titans, no matter what version comes along. Live, animated, right. comic, movie, whatever. Everyone still has 2003 Titans. They are the Teen Titans. But quickly, Superman and Justice League, before we get to your numero uno, okay. Superman, I, so many people didn't know that he was writing the episode. Yes. They found out indirectly, like, what? Oh my gosh, Drew McDuffie. And then it made sense when you would think about some of the episodes you saw within that series, and the same for Justice League. You had that same element teamwork and the family and each character having their shortcomings and things they were working through it came through the same way except with adults instead yeah. of teens right and some of those episodes for both superman and justice league are so freaking memorable and you had versions of justice league that you will never forget. There will never be another Flash like this Flash. There will yes. never be another Superman or Sexy Man with the beard. Like <laughs> there will never be another Batman or Wonder Bat like in this series. There will never be another John Smith uh, focus for Green Lantern. This is the only series he was able to be in. He has Shaira. You had so much 
and again it's uh, just a celebration of his writing and how every time he wrote anything all these elements came into and those values and those morals and again spectacular top tier just excellence beyond anything yes. else you could ever imagine yes absolutely and even with this of a Justice League, yeah, it, you can see now if you go online, people still talk about Justice League. Oh, yeah. Again, decades later, and I did not watch Justice League when it first came out. This was before I got into superhero shows. I knew it came on. I saw hints of it here and there, well, thank but that's God it. For Netflix, because Netflix carried Ben Ten. Netflix carried Justice League. Justice League, both the first and the second yes. season, and all of the Ben Ten and Generator X. Yes. which I know wasn't him, but still. Yes. You still had uh, full access to it. Yes. But, yeah. And now we saw it years later. It's like, wow, this was pretty ahead of its time because a lot of people want that type of stuff. Now, unfortunately, you don't see too much of it now or it just goes unnoticed. But he provided a lot of it. And when the kids were watching, they were really getting the essence of what it is to be a hero. And I think it's part of what inspired MHA because mm -hmm. his shows, the superhero shows, always ask the question, what does it mean to be a hero? Are you truly a hero? Do you fight for the people for, for, to be a hero to protect them? Or do you just want, do you just like being famous and nothing more? Um, sh you, do you kill the villain or not? Which is a huge thing now. Yes. And those important ideals of being a hero and just being a good person were always in the show. Even when the people kind of had the bad moments or the funny moments, they were always learning that lesson. Even with Unlimited, when it kind of lost a bit of his seriousness the lessons were still in there they just had to apply yeah. it to way more character so that was the only difference with that one. absolutely and now to the piece de resistance the creme de la creme <laughs> what he's most famous for his most epic creation that left a generation of kids there's no way to put it still loving this show and wishing they could see more and missing him, Static Shock. Yes, Static Shock, which was not only the first show I saw of Dwayne McDuffie's, it was also the first DC DC show I watched, and it was my very first superhero show. Yes, just excellence again, excellence. And for this one, saw the whole series of this. It's just it shows kind of hard to find unless you get on DVD yes. or possibly on HBO Max if they have it on there. But the thing about Static was that one of the main things is that there was not a main black superhero on TV, whether it was animated or live action. So Static was one of the first. Yes. And having it air on WB or Cartoon Network was definitely an achievement because having it alongside Teen Titans and the DCAU was all in that same universe because at one point they were going to have him meet the Teen Titans and unfortunately it never happened. We're all still waiting for it. But they did have some excellent crossovers. Yes. Get to. Yes. Like ones with the Justice League, Batman, Batman Beyond, Beyond, Batman himself, yes. um, Shaquille O'Neal, Dwayne McDuffie himself appeared yes. on there <laughs> and even some old school superheroes on there as well. And the thing about Stag was that it was this even though it was in the DCAU, um, it was still its own thing. Static was still his own character. And they only made like maybe one or two changes to him from the comics. And aside from that, he was comic accurate. And the whole basis of Static was that, you know, he had lost his mom, his dad's an officer, his sister helps take care of him too but you know they kind of had the little sibling squabbles every now and then and the thing for him was that he was tired of getting bullied and the one thing they had in the comic was of how he got the powers remained the same but it was how was a little different um he was going to join a game and to like pretty much get back at the bullies he thought that would kind of up his seriousness and they wouldn't mess with him if he joined this gang and he was gonna gave him a weapon and he was going to use it and he really thought about it because the weapon was the reason he lost his mother and he saw that there were innocents over over where they were going to um, rob a place and he threw the gun away he didn't want to end up like them because of what weapons did to his family so he chose not to do it and before he left there was experimental gas though and they were called uh, bang babies which was definitely a little dated now unfortunately and when he was exposed to the gas they got powers 
and the only thing they changed for Stack was that uh, what he joined was different. That was it because it came out in the 90s. But here they just had him join like a street gang. That was it. It was, it was a little simpler. And he got ele electrical powers. And throughout the series, you kind of see him develop his powers, grow as a character, and kind of like Benton, learn to be a hero. He kind of got updates in his outfits. You see all these galleries, the rogues gallery of his own, like Batman. And it was completely diverse in every way with his characters and the heroes and the villains and the minor characters, the major characters, the guest stars, everybody. And Jason Marsden just becoming it's, a it's Richie, VA. yes. Legend, yes. Yes, yes. Well, you have seen Richie. Phil Lamar, let's and, not forget. Oh, Phil Lamar, of course, as uh, Static himself. Yes. And one thing about it is that, you know, it kind of stayed a Saturday morning cartoon most of the time. When it got towards later seasons, it did have some serious issues. The biggest ones that made an impact was one where Richie's dad was known to be racist. And he didn't like his son was hanging with Static. And that was one of the few exposures kids had to that where it was teaching him, you know, how to be with people, how to treat them, and someone learning from this. Because even his father goes through the growth and changing his ways when he deals with Static and his father. You don't know why he's like this, but what matters is that he's going to learn the lesson and change. Another one that made an impact was a holiday one. And instead of focusing on Santa Claus and find the perfect gift, the, he was sort of fighting this villainess who wasn't really villainous. She had a mental disorder. She couldn't control her ice power. Then he tried to help her. And she was also homeless. They were also teaching, you know, yeah, about this time of year, it's supposed to be about fellowship and giving. But there were people on the streets. There were people not getting the attention they need. And he's wondering, like, how come these people are helped? Why can't, how come I can't help them? It was really based on awareness of being more sympathetic towards people not just around those times but just yeah of, of all the time as well and then the biggest one would be the the uh, bully one there was a kid called jimmy who was picked on every single day and bullied her ass and this particular episode kind of impact on me and so many people when they talk about it online is that jimmy was I, I don't know he was a nerd, he just got picked on a lot, mercilessly. Uh, and he got so fed up with that, he brought a weapon to school. And he threatened to take out the bully, or anyone else that tried to stop him. And when Richie was trying to get him to calm down, and keep him from, from hitting somebody, he's the one that got injured and put in the hospital. And you never saw that kid again after that episode. It was dark, but again, it was dark with a purpose. It was telling a story, teaching a lesson. And the episode was so impactful that not only did it win awards, but I see people to this day saying, you know, they still don't touch a weapon because of that episode. Because it was such a scary thought knowing this could happen to them. Because it was played pretty realistically, even with the superhero element. This could happen to them or someone they know. They could hurt a pe hurting people they intend to. And it was that impactful that they just wouldn't. It really was effective. Like McGruff the Crime Dog was pretty really effective towards kids and teens that watched it. They didn't have any issues with weapon related things after that episode. And I would keep hearing it years later. It still impacted them. And the episode itself won awards just for how much it impacted communities, how it impacted kids, it impacted parents, students, everybody. That episode pretty much changed the uh, status quo of Stag of showing it wasn't just a kid superhero show. It was definitely a show that was teaching you life lessons. And that is one of the ribbons that joins all of these things that he's written. Mm -hmm. The moral, the values, and putting that into every single thing that he wrote. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's something that doesn't exist now for the most part in American comics. It's gone. And it began to be on a downturn, unfortunately, after his passing. Yeah. When a lot of his properties were turned over to others. Yes. No yeah. disrespect to them, but the way he looked at the world was different than how they look at the world. Yeah. And one thing that I really love that I have seen through all of these shows is the message that anyone could be a superhero for the right reasons. Yes. Not just, you know, in the costume or with powers, but in your own community, 
in your own home, with your own family, yes. at your school, at your place of work. Yes. That was just something that really came through powerfully through his work. Yes. And that is something that is missing from so many of the animated shows and comics that are out there now. It's become something like a flip side where all of these things that he included that made not only it informative and educational and fun and fill that need for superheroes and that need for, yes. for action and things, it's gone. And now it's become about something totally different. Mm -hmm. And the messages aren't that anyone can be better, anyone can do better, anyone can do the right thing. Um, think of your choices. And anyone can have a family where it's biological or whether it's one you form yourself. All those elements are gone. Yeah. And it's like so much is missing. Yeah. So much heart. That's the best way yeah. to put it. So yeah. much heart that Dwayne McDuffie put into the things he wrote is missing from our comics and our animated shows in the U.S. now. Yes. If you agree, let us know in the comments below. Also, before we continue, which one of these shows is your favorite? Let us know in the comments. Did Static Shock have the same impact on you as it had on Rascal? Let us know in the comments. Ben 10. What did it mean to you? Teen Titans, what did it mean to you? Justice League, Superman, let us know in the comments below. Yes. And my final addition to talking about Static Shock and Duffy as a whole is that, like I said, with Teen Titans, there is no other Titans. There's always 03 no matter what version comes about. Static is the same way. Recently, they had done a revival comic. I was going to get to yes. that. I'm glad you brought it Yes. They, were going, they did a revival comic, and it was eventually going to be turned into a TV show because they call it season one. It was a whole different writer, whole different team, and they rebooted a static story. Now, I do not recommend reading this comic. However, if you do want to read it just to check it out, you're welcome to. But however, Stax's character, it was an insult to the original fans because Stax's character was all about empathy and love and being a hero and saving people. His entire character has gone from love to hate. He hates, unfortunately, so many people, a specific type of people, and he uses anger to fuel his powers, and that was not how it worked. And it's almost like they wanted to take him out of his creation. Like, okay, we know Dwayne and Duffy created this, but we don't want him to have anything to do with this. Okay, let's just flip it over then, and just make it something different. Yeah. Why on earth would you do it in service to the memory of this man, this character, all that the character stood for, the legacy that was left behind by this character, and you decide to do this, and as you say, unfortunately, create um, an environment of hate, yeah. rather than one of working together and making the world better is beyond me. I don't know why you've chosen to do it. If you're listening to this, you want to let us know in the comments, let yeah. us know. Explain to us why yeah. you chose to, in essence, destroy Static Shock. Yes, and it's very unfortunate because I was truly excited for this comic. I was ready to see Static back, even with new people. And when this came out, I remember so many people were just really yeah. upset. They were like, "How? This is not the same character. This is a whole other character with his name." And the fact that he doesn't save everybody anymore. All he wants now is vengeance against the bully. The bully has been revamped too to be even worse than before. Now he just wants vengeance all the time, and he almost kills somebody now in the comics. And it's I'm so unfortunate because it's it's almost like you're watching, reading an alternate universe comic. It's a different character. Yeah. To me, it's a different character that should have had a different name. And the only other time we've seen another version of Static and Young Justice, and they still managed to respect the character yes, as they he did. wrote it. He was a little different, but all in all, he still was the same character that was having an issue, was working through it, ended up, you know, having his own little family with the runaway. Yes. And and wanting to do the right thing, wanting to save people, wanting to be a hero for the right reason. Right. It still stayed true to that. Right. And how these people can write this and say, oh, all you static fans, you're going to love it. You know, did you even do any focus groups? No. Did you even talk to anybody? Did you even watch the series? Did you right. even read the original <laughs> comic? No. Did you even know who Dwayne no. McDuffie was? No. Because it's all like it all these things didn't apply. All that mattered was that this was the new static and they actually kind of didn't care if the old readers liked it 
or not, they want a whole new audience, and they didn't even get a new audience either because the comic barely has any issues. People don't talk about unless to say how it's so unlike static. So, like I said, if you would like to check it out, you can, but you're gonna see this comic does not have the outstanding writing or empathy of the TV show or the his original comic. Definitely not. For Dwayne McDuffie, if you want to know more about him, type in the Wikipedia and see the wonderful information, all the awards, and all the good he did for the society as a whole and his background and his how comics helped to make him the person that he was not only uh, community wise not only as a person not only career wise not only just wanting to take that love of what he loved and share it with others put it into wikipedia and read and you're absolutely gonna love it and we hope that we've done justice to honoring him this month. And if you have any favorite Dwayne McDuffie memories, let us know them in the comments below. The comments, sorry. Comments, yeah. you say comments, the comments Oh yeah, the below. comments too. And if you love as much as we do and you have your own channel, hey, do a little tribute to him for February Black History Month. Make a little video, share it so we all can just appreciate what he meant as a writer and a director and an artist and as a human being and as someone who really truly was a wonderful role model for everyone yes not just for the black community which he was but for everyone on the whole because he taught everyone how to be a better person just through his actions and just through his writing and that's something we really desperately need now in the comics here because it's just not here you gotta go to manga for it <laughs> and yeah. manga's cue has come from not only people like Dwayne McDuffie and his creations but for others who came before him and who shared those values and roles as well we really really miss you Dwayne McDuffie you were one of a kind and thank you so much for all of the wonderful memories and the shows you've left us and for just making not only every kid who watched him, like Rascal, but every adult who learned about him as well. See the world in a better way and know that it wasn't just comics and it wasn't just animation, but it's a medium that can help to spread positive messages in positive ways, beautifully, and as I said before, with heart. Yes, and of course, as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and click notification when there is a future podcast and we'll to pause video. Absolutely. If you haven't seen any of these series, you're going to have to either buy them or, yeah, you're going to have to buy them pretty much because Static Shock, Teen Titans, Ben 10, except for the new reboots, uh, the Justice League, Superman, none of these things are available to watch anymore on any of the streaming services. You have to buy them, but you can find them on Amazon. They do have some great prices. We own all of Teen Titans, some Static Shock, some of Ben 10, the games as well. And hopefully they will start to put out maybe a compendium or a collector's editions of each of these shows, including Justice League. We own Justice League. Yes. This first yes. series. And Superman, I think, is available. It was available in Prime. It may not be anymore. But again, if you want to see it, you probably have to buy it to get to see it. But it's worth every penny you invest in purchasing any of these series. Yes. All just top tier. Yes. So, thank you so much for watching. I'm Happy, Mas Happy Black History Month. Yes. I'm Mask Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace.